Good morning and welcome as we gather here on this glorious Wednesday morning. Uh, as I was saying to uh, uh, saying earlier before, uh, on Monday I went for my first ocean swim since winter. Uh, everyone else was swimming, I thought it must be the right time, but uh, yeah. I'll keep persevering until the water gets a bit warmer. <laughs> I'd like to start this morning with a song that uh, we've had a couple of times um, called Cornerstone. Now, I had a text message from Sarah, who is the, uh, the singer on the, the uh, female voice on the soundtrack, and she is ready to do some more songs. So uh, as we go along, we'll be having some new songs coming through probably in about three or so weeks, and she's also keen to do some Christmas songs as well. But this one is called Cornerstone.
Let us turn to our, our booklets to begin our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. As we are gathered here, let us confess our sins and penitence in faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, whose hand is open to fill all things living with plenteousness, make us ever thankful for your goodness and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Our opening reading is taken from Galatians chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse 1. Then, after fourteen years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up in response to a revelation. Then I laid before them, though only in a private meeting with the acknowledged leaders, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles in order to make sure that I was not running, or had not run in vain. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel for the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel for the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter, making him an apostle to the circumcised, also worked through me in sending me to the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who were acknowledged pillars, recognised the grace that had been given to me, they gave to Barnabas and me the right hand of fellowship, agreeing that we should go to the Gentiles 
and they to the circumcised. They asked only one thing, that we remember the poor, which was actually what I was eager to do. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision, circumcision faction. And the other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next we have the shortest psalm that we will ever come across in our, in our, our prayer books. Psalm 117. If you could respond in the bold text. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. For great is his loving kindness towards us. Here endeth the Son. Let us stand for the Gospel reading. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Outside of the, the very short psalm, we have two somewhat different readings, one from Galatians and the Gospel that uh, was from Luke, but they kind of tie in together. The first one is talking about the, uh, the change of direction with the church. Paul knew he was compelled to take the Gospel to the Gentiles or the non-Jewish people. And that's why when we look at the, the map of where he travelled, he travelled all around Asia Minor, as it was known as, taking the gospel to those who had not heard it. And he had a tough job because a lot of the Greeks had the Greek philosophy. It was the age of philosophy at that time. And they had all their Greek gods that a lot of time were generated from uh, the, the leaders and rulers at the time who believed that one day when they died, they would become immortal and they would be like gods. We also know that with Egypt and the area as well, there was so much that was in competition to Christianity. But Paul, in his wisdom, we know, he, he understood how to reach them by showing, using the language that they used, especially to the, the Greeks, using their language to talk about Christ in a way that they could understand. And we saw the churches open and flourish. But there was concern to... The, uh, the Jewish people, what they call the Jewish Council, uh, the Jerusalem Council, because they assumed that because Jesus, first of all, came only to the, uh, the Jewish community, that Paul was possibly out of line taking the gospel to the Gentiles. And so there was a bit of tension there for a while. But uh, they came together and they ironed it out. And it was, in fact, Paul that pointed out uh, what he called an hypocrisy, and it was um, Cephas he opposed to his face because he was doing one thing in front of the Jewish community and saying another thing in front of the, um, the, the rest of them, the Gentiles. But we know in Christ that's not how we are supposed to be. It's like carrying on 
uh, or B, the people as we gather here, and they're going out and being party animals down at the local pub and saying, that's okay. We are called to be one witness, not only to our friends and those around us, but also to the wider world. We're called to let our lives be the light of Christ in the world. And that's what Paul was pointing out, especially to Cephas in this passage from Galatians. And he was, when he was writing the letter, letter to the Galatians, he was saying, I am standing up for the right of the Gentiles to hear the gospel message. In Luke's reading is a beautiful little passage where they come up and say, teach us how to pray. And you know, we might think this is quite trivial because we know the Lord's Prayer came from this. But sometimes we don't always remember how to pray. We know the world see it as the, at the last ditch attempt of all else fails, cry out to help for God, to God and say, fix this problem, take care of it, pay my bill, save me. Uh, and we hear it time and time again. But there is a, what Jesus is showing is an actual structure on how we should pray. And it starts by putting God first and ourselves last. When you pray, he says, Father, hallowed be your name. In other words, he is saying, focus on God being holy, separated from us. Draw from ourselves the richness and the good that God has created and what he has, he has done for the world. Admire his greatness, his authority and his power. And then talk about his kingdom come, about how he came and created this earth and we see the presence of God in the world around us and praise him for it. The next part is give us each day our daily bread. And that is thanking God for what we have. Not everything we have is what we want. But we have what we need. And we can thank and praise God for that because he has spent the time and the care watching over us. And we are very fortunate in this country because we look at some places around the world where there is such persecution against the Christian church where to say, give us today our daily bread, there is no bread for them. What does it look for the, like for these people who know pain and suffering? But we are blessed to be in a place where we can thank God. And then it says, forgive us our sins. So all of a sudden we are acknowledging that God, through Christ, is the forgiver of the sins that we have committed. And when we pray through Jesus Christ, we know that he is the mediator to God. And so God hears his son apologizing and saying sorry for us. Therefore we are forgiven. And then the, Jesus said to them, forgive as you have been uh, forgive everyone indebted to us. And what he's saying there is if God is prepared to forgive you, are you prepared to forgive those who you hold grudges against? That's a toughie, isn't it, sometimes? We look at that and we think, oh, I can do that, but uh, um, I remember in a certain place having a neighbour who was probably the most challenging person I've ever met and saying, Lord, how am I supposed to forgive this person? It's a process. But this is where it starts, the focus being the prayer for God to becoming prayer for ourselves. The focus on ourselves, where we start to look at those and we need to forgive. And then at the end he says, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And that's where we're saying, Lord, help me. It's right at the end of the prayer we're asking God for help, not at the start. And that's the beautiful structure of the Lord's Prayer. Focusing on God, what he has done in creation, what he has done for us, what he is in the process of doing, and then at the end, we, we trust and praise and ask for help for us to be able to finish this race. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us together affirm the faith of the church. Please stand. We believe in one God, 
the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Gracious God, we thank you for the love that you have for us. We thank you and praise you for your the handiwork that you put into creating the world that we dwell in. We praise you for the wonders of the colours you paint across the skies in the morning and evenings, for the sun that brings growth, the rain that waters the earth. Lord, there is so much that we can see and marvel at, and yet there is so much more, that your hand is upon everything in creation. We look at our world today and we call out and ask you to be with those who are suffering at this time. We see our nations pulled apart by COVID-19. We see other nations torn apart by war. We look at our own nation and Lord, we praise you that we are doing so well. At times in the recession, we're not even aware of it. But we know there are certain sectors in our communities where there is unemployment, where there is challenge and struggle. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of employment. Guide the people of this land to use their wealth and resources so that everyone may find suitable and fulfilling work. May all receive just payment and recognition for their labour and offer the fruit of their toil and service to you and to one another. We are also aware, Lord God, of the pressures that families are under, where people are driven from homes where there is sadly violence and abuse. God of peace, we pray for families in crisis. Heal the brokenhearted and bind up the wounded. Comfort and sustain them in their need. Give them wise and faithful friends, grace to forgive and be forgiven, and courage for the road ahead. We cry to you for those who suffer abuse. And Lord, we ask you to be with them in their confusion and their pain. Lord, we pray that you can heal the wounds of body and mind and break open the prisons of fear, self-doubt and despair and strengthen them to face the future with faith, hope and courage. We ask you, Lord, to reach out to them with your love that they may be made whole in body, mind and spirit through the healing touch of the suffering Christ. Lord, we pray for your church and a call to discipleship. Christ, whose insistent call disturbs our settled lives, 
Give us discernment to hear your word, grace to relinquish our tasks, and courage to follow empty-handed wherever you may lead, so that the voice of your gospel may reach the ends of the earth. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave your peace, are you peace, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, our divisions and our confusions, but grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be standing. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Peace be with you. We've had this song at the service. It's called Ten Thousand Reasons. And it's talking about asking God to bless us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. And it goes like this.
Let us say together, Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I just want to say thank you very much to all who have brought in these Christmas boxes. The pile is huge. We tried to get them as evenly as possible so that everything was nicely balanced. But uh, what a wonderful, wonderful show of care for the people who have less than what we do. Thank you very much. Uh, what other notices do I have? Uh, you're most welcome on the Sunday, the 25th of October. We're having, I'm looking at having one service at 10.30 because we have a baptism. And it's a family from Chicabia that uh, have approached us. All their family have a history of being baptised in here. We thought it would be great to get everyone together. So you're most welcome to come along for that. Uh, they are about the only notices, unless you want to come to our working bee on Saturday. Joyce, you look happy. <laughs> Even with a mask on, you look happy. <laughs> We're going to be pulling out a few weeds and uh, tidying the place up. But uh, in the meantime, before we go into this glorious day, how do I get that all tangled? Never mind. I'd like to finish just with one more song, and this is one called um, I Praise the Name, and it talks about the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. And it goes like this.
us stand. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless.